Hey, hello, my name's Stephen Hamilton from Honeyweb Online Marketing Solutions. And first of all, let me thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video training. Right now, there are more people on social media than ever before. So you need to make sure your social media is set up properly so you don't waste any of those opportunities. As promised, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple three-stage social media strategy that you can set on autopilot. Before we get started, I do want to tell you a little bit more about myself and my business Honeyweb. Don't worry, I'm not going to waste too much time on this section. My online marketing journey started back in 1998. I actually used to play AFL football in Melbourne for the Kangaroos and I played SANFL in Adelaide in South Australia. But I was getting injured all the time during my career, so I figured I'd better find something else to do. And it wasn't long after my football career ended that I discovered a little thing called the internet. Now the thing I love about online marketing is it's evidence-based. So everything I'm gonna show you in this training is not my opinion or anyone else's opinion for that matter. It's all based on science and research. And I really look forward to showing you some of that research shortly. But before we do that, I wanna tell you a little bit more about Honeyweb. Honeyweb is an evidence-based online marketing agency with a focus on performance. And what I mean by performance is if I'm going to spend any time, effort, and especially money marketing my own business, I want to know I'm getting the best return on investment possible. And I'm going to take a guess that you probably feel the same way. Now, using my knowledge, I increased one of my clients' website leads by over 1,097%, and another one's online sales by over 1,500%. Now they're pretty impressive numbers and a big claim on my behalf, but again, I look forward to showing you how we achieve those numbers during the training. Now, if you want to look at my website later, you can, but under the services tab, you'll see we do everything to do with online marketing. My focus though is on website design, e-commerce and social media. Now, social media has pretty much taken over my business, mainly because of the results we've been getting. We've got over 800 clients all over Australia from multinational companies right down to my local Indian restaurant around the corner from where I live. Um, we've helped hundreds of businesses in all different industry types and I've got over 100 five-star reviews and recommendations on Facebook, Google and on my website. So we know how to get this to work for your business and I really look forward now to getting into the training and showing you exactly how to set up this strategy so it generates more sales, leads, bookings and orders for your business. Let's get into it. This is what we're going to go through in the training session. I'm going to show you why embracing social media is so important for your business today, how to use the hook story offer technique that gets people's attention and actually persuades them to take an action. I'm also going to show you how to structure your Facebook business page so you get more inquiries from visitors, and also how to use an AI chatbot to generate leads in Facebook Messenger. We're going to go through how to run successful Facebook and Instagram advertising campaigns, and I'll also show you how to connect and engage with your local community so they become regular customers as well. I mentioned earlier, the thing I love about online marketing is it's evidence-based. And everything we do is based on science and research. So some of the places I get that information from is a company like Mech Labs. Now this is a US marketing firm and this is their marketing experiments website. Now I pay a lot of money to businesses like these to get all the latest research and then I can implement that into my own business and into my clients' businesses as well. So as I said, I do know how to use this strategy that's been proven through research like this. Now just to give you an idea about what these guys are offering here, essentially what they do is test and measure everything you can imagine when it comes to marketing. So they're talking here about data pattern analysis, value proposition competitive analysis, conversion heuristic analysis, certified value prop codex, etc. Now it all sounds fancy, but basically what they're talking about there is mainly psychology. Okay, we're trying to convince someone to take an action. Buy this now, fill in this form, call us, come into the store, place an order, place a booking, right? Psychology, if you understand how to get people to do things, you're gonna get more of those sales leads, bookings and orders we've talked about earlier. So to give you a bit of an idea about some of the training they've got here. So here they're talking about the marketer as a philosopher. As you can see, that's episode three. There's three parts to that training. They're talking about the prospect's perception gap. Transparent marketing, making sure your marketing is transparent and honest. Okay, now this is a lot to do with psychology, as I said, but it's also teaching us practical training, which is what we call A-B split testing. Now I'm gonna go through that in more detail shortly. But testing different button colors on websites to see which button gets more clicks. Right, all these things are designed to help you and me as marketers and business owners 
get the most out of our marketing time, effort and money. Now, as I said, there's thousands of hours worth of research in here. The great news is I've had to learn this so you don't have to. And I'm going to give you the basic three things that you need to understand in order to take your business to the next level or wherever you want it to go. So let's go in and discuss the three main takeaways from this type of training. If you've got a pen handy, I'll get you to write down the three things you can see on the screen now. Conversion marketing, AB split testing and value propositions. If you need to pause the video, do so. But we're going to go through these three things now. I'm going to explain them in a way that hopefully entertains you, but more importantly, gets you to understand why these three things are so important for your business moving forward. So the way I explain conversion marketing is to imagine that you and I own a restaurant together. Now, if we get 100 people turn up to our restaurant, I'm going to argue they're probably hungry and they're probably interested in eating at our restaurant. They wouldn't be there otherwise, obviously. So if we got 100 people turn up and we gave them all the menu and we only got one order out of 100 people. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd be very unhappy about that. And I'd be saying to you as my business partner that we need to change our menu immediately. And I would hope that you would agree to do that. So the same thing applies when we talk about websites. For every 100 people who visit our website, they're there because they're interested in our business. So we need to make sure we get as many inquiries as possible from the website. And the same goes for your Facebook business page. For every 100 people who visit this page, they are there because they're interested in your business. They've come here to decide whether they want to do business with you. They're checking you out. So it's vitally important that you've got your page designed and structured correctly so you don't waste those opportunities. The second thing on our list was called AB split testing. So using the restaurant analogy, imagine if we could put out two menus, menu A and menu B, just to test which menu generated more orders. That's essentially what we mean by AB split testing. But let me jump onto one of my client's websites to explain it in the context of an e-commerce store. Okay, this is one of my client's e-commerce stores. And just like the restaurant, we want to get as many orders as possible. The same thing applies here. So for every 100 people who visit this website, we need to sell as many bars of soap as possible. Now, the way we do that using AB split testing is you'll see here I've got the Shop Now button highlighted in a green box. So let's call that version A in the AB split test. Version B, we wouldn't highlight that button. Okay, so we've now got two websites. Version A with a highlighted Shop Now button in a green box and version B where we don't highlight the button. It just looks like the rest of this navigation. Now when people visit this website, we can split the traffic 50-50, and after a certain amount of time we can work out, okay, which version of this website generates more sales? Now you'll be amazed by simply highlighting the Shop Now button, and this goes for all e-commerce sites, globally in all different industries. By highlighting that Shop Now button, the shopping cart increases by over 22%. 22% just because of the button being highlighted. Now even button colours matter, so we can test a red button versus a green button versus an orange button. All the colours in the rainbow if we wanted to. But one test that was done is all we did was change a button from red to green. It wasn't this website, but we, all we did was change a button from red to green, and it had a 30 plus percent increase in people clicking that button just because of the colour change. Now even what's written in the navigation, what you've got here in the um, headers, even what's written in the button, all of these things matter. That's why you need to A-B split test. So I'll give you another example. See, I've got discover more written in this button with a little arrow here. Now we used to have cl uh, click here, sorry, in these buttons. We changed it from click here to learn more. The click through rate, which means people clicking the button, went up 13 something percent. We then went from learn more to discover more where we are today, and the click through rate went up an additional 20 plus percent. Now amazingly, over 75% of people actually click directly on that little arrow. And if you don't have the arrow in these buttons, the click-through rate can drop by over 15%. So silly little things like this, which you wouldn't think would make much difference, can have a massive impact on how your website or your Facebook page performs. And that's how we achieved that 1,097% increase in website leads I mentioned earlier. Okay, because again, for every 100 people who visit our Facebook page, our websites, they're there because they're interested in our business. There's no other reason why they'd be there. And that's why AB split testing is so important. And that's essentially what these guys are doing. 
They're testing and measuring everything you can imagine when it comes to marketing our businesses. Again, all designed to make sure that you and I as business owners get as many opportunities as possible. The third and final thing on our list was called value propositions. Now this is the most important thing in marketing, so I really want you to focus on this part of the training. If you've got that pen handy, I want you to also write down value proposition sequencing. And if you remember earlier, I mentioned hook story offer. So if you can write down hook story offer as well, because I'm gonna explain how hook story offer relates to value propositions and value proposition sequencing. So let's get in value propositions. Why are they so important? How's it gonna help your business? A good way to understand what we mean by a value proposition is to think about or to understand that every single business is providing a solution to a problem. So what is the solution that your business provides? What's the problems? So let, let me explain it using the restaurant analogy again. Okay, well what's the problem? Are you hungry? What's the solution? We sell food. Now it sounds so stupidly obvious when I say it, but this is the mistake that most people make, most marketers. Okay, people don't care about you or me. All they care about is their problem. Do you have a solution, yes or no? Now, if they don't instantly believe that we have a solution to their problem, get out the way, next. That's how brutal it is out there. You think about how quickly you can flick through your newsfeed and how quickly you can go through your Google search results. So if you get your value proposition right, it means you're gonna get a lot more opportunities to get more sales. If you get it wrong, then you're gonna miss those opportunities. So value propositions, as I said, the most important thing in marketing. Now the next thing I'm gonna go through is value proposition sequencing. And I'll explain how that then relates to the hook story offer method I mentioned earlier. What we mean by value proposition sequencing is simply the sequence or the order that you have to do this in in order to get the right results or the best results. Now a good way to think about it is to say that you and I would not walk up to a perfect stranger and ask them to marry us. <laughs> well, I certainly wouldn't, I don't know about you. But let's think about how does this work in the real world? Well, first of all, you've got to get that person's attention. If you don't get their attention, they're not going to go on a date with us. And if they don't go on a date with us, they're never going to marry us. And the same thing applies in business. If we don't get that person's attention, they're never gonna find out the, the solutions we have to their problems, which means they're never gonna get a quote or place an order or do a sale. It's exactly the same psychology, the same um, sequencing. Okay, so what happens once you've got someone's attention? Well, in the real world, you go up and introduce yourself and then you start a conversation. And it's during that conversation, you're trying to make a connection with another human being. You're trying to gain their trust. No one's gonna go on a date with us if they don't trust us. And the same thing applies in business. No one's gonna do business with us if they don't trust us. So this is the story part of Hook Story Offer. Hook, get their attention. Story, introduce yourself. Start a conversation. Talk about the problems. Provide the solutions to those problems. And then once you've done that, then it's all about the offer or the call to action. So again, can I get your phone number? Would you like to go on a date? Will you fill in this form? Buy this now. Book a free social media strategy session. Okay, so hook story offer. Always remember that when you're doing anything to do with your business in regards to marketing. But none of this is going to work unless we get people's attention. So where do you go to get people's attention? You go where people are, duh, obviously. So where are people spending their time today? It's on social media. Now I'm not sure if you've heard of the term digital disruption, but what that means is technology coming along and changing or disrupting the way we do things. So let me give you two quick examples. Uber, Uber disrupted taxi cabs, took over 75% of their business. Yellow pages, what happened to yellow pages? Well, Google came along Yellow Pages is now the size of a postage stamp. And Google's one of the biggest companies on the planet today. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is because social media is today's media. We're now spending more time on our smartphones and on social media than we are watching television. Channel 9 have merged with Fairfax Media. And the reason why they merged is all of the big advertisers 
they've all moved their money away from traditional marketing and they've moved it into social media as well. And the only reason why you'd move money into one investment from another is because you're getting a better return on investment. Now the reason why that's happening is because they're following the eyeballs, they're going where the people are. So more people equals more opportunity to sell your products and services. Now another reason why the money's moved into online marketing and social media is from a targeting perspective. So for me, I only want business owners like you to see my ads. Why would I pay for someone who doesn't own a business to see my ads? It makes no sense at all for me to do that. Yet if I put an ad on radio, television or in the print, 95% of the people who see that don't own a business. I would have just wasted 95% of my money. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to waste that much. The other great thing about targeting, and especially on Facebook, we've never had the ability like this before in, in advertising, is we can target different people with different areas, with different messaging. So if you're a restaurant, you can target people within a 5, 10K radius of your business. If your target audience is 55 to 75 year olds, we can target those. And if you've got different age groups, the messaging or the value proposition, hook story offer messaging, to a 25 to 35 year old person is totally different from a 50 to 65 year old person. Men and women, different messaging. So you can run all these, remember I mentioned AB split testing earlier. So you can run a different range of ads, again, testing and measuring which ones are getting you the best return on investment. Now the final reason why most of this money is moved is from a word of mouth perspective. Now that might surprise you, but let me explain what I mean. So let's say you and me were friends and you told me about a fantastic restaurant in the area that you live in. Now as a friend of mine, I trust you. And based on your recommendation, I would go try the restaurant. But today, most people, vast majority of people, will go look at our social media channels, mainly our Facebook business page first. And they're going there to decide whether they want to do business with us. So if your Facebook business page is poorly designed and poorly structured with the wrong messaging, you're going to waste those opportunities, just like I mentioned with the menu with the restaurant. And I think we both agree that, you know, again, if, the, if you knew your restaurant menus weren't getting you enough orders, you'd change the menu. So the same thing applies with your Facebook business page. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go through and do a review of a, a big company in Australia. I'm going to look at their Facebook business page. I'm going to run through what they've done right and what they've done wrong. And then I'm going to use my page to explain how to set up your page so you can get the benefits of everybody who visits your page to actually start generating more sales leads, bookings and orders. So I've chosen Telstra to do the review. Now, love them or hate them, they are one of the biggest companies in Australia. So I'm gonna go through their Facebook business page and explain what they've done right and what they've done wrong. And I also think I might do a smaller business. Now, I've got a lot of um, building clients and building type clients. So I might just type in Sydney Builders here. All right, let's just go to pages and I'll click on this first one. All right, so we'll use this as another example of what they've done right and what they've done wrong. Okay, so let's go back to Telstra. Now, if you remember, I said anyone who comes to our page is interested in our business. That's the only reason they're here. So we need, now need to convince them to take an action, whatever that action is. Call this number, fill in this form, go visit our website, book a free social media strategy session, whatever it is. Now, have a look at this space here. Well, the first thing, sorry, Logo, right, they've got their logo, sits in nice and neatly, so I'll give them a tick for that. Make sure your logo sits in there beautifully because I've seen logos cut off, I've seen them, one of them I've seen upside down. You know, it doesn't reflect good on your business if that's the case. Um, but look at this area here. Remember, I've got a problem, I'm looking for a solution. I've come here to decide whether you're the solution to my problem. There's no hook story offer messaging going on in here. So again, what do you want me to do? Right, so don't do that. Let's have a look at the Sydney one. Again, nice photograph, but again, hook story offer. I've got a problem, I'm looking for a solution. Are you the solution to my problem? Convince me. Right, there's no hook story offer happening here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flick between, first of all, let me show you some examples of clients that I've actually helped upgrade their pages and I'll show you how to use this space correctly, then we'll go back and I'll flick between my page and those other pages 
to finish off the review. So let's just jump on to this one here. Now this is a real estate agent. Now obviously, you and I, the only reason we'd go to this real estate agent page in the real world is because we were looking for a real estate agent to sell our homes. So let's go check out Steve from Hardcourt Packham to see if he's the man for us, the real estate agent for us. Remember, hook story offer. So thinking of selling your home. Hook one. Wondering how much your home's worth. Hook two. Introduction. Remember, hook story offer. And here's his story. Right, so again, how much more effective is that rather than just having a photograph of a real estate agent standing there with a sold sign? I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm choosing this guy over the other one. All right, let's have a look at a couple of other ones. Now, this is a guy who used to play soccer, A-League soccer for Adelaide United and Melbourne City. He's got a soccer academy. So do your kids love football? Do you want them to have fun and reach their full potential? But again, I've written all of this copy, all these hook story offers for these clients. But again, now you're going to send your kid to this person over someone who's just got a photograph of themselves or their logo sitting there. So I won't run the whole thing. Let's have a look at another one. So this is an air conditioning company in Sydney. Just pop it up to full screen. Right, so is your home or office too hot in summer? Is your home or office too cold in winter? There's your hooks. So again, I've created the videos for these clients. Or cover videos. Again, so I think you're getting the idea. So I'll just jump on to another one. So this is a travel quota, which do quotes from uh, travel agents all around Australia. Right, so do you love to travel? Would you like to travel more often for less? Who wouldn't? Okay, so now there's a new easy way to get travel quotes from travel agents. Right, again, if I don't know this, I can't choose this person. So you've got to convince me that you've got the solution to my problem. Right, this is a... Let me pop it up. Right, a company called The Feeder Project, or a charity, actually. So I've helped these guys out, but... Again, hook story offer. Again, we're trying to convince the, this person on this page that they should donate to this charity. All right, let me show you another one. If you want to look at a lot of these, you can just jump on my website, go to the video, sorry, my Facebook business page and go to the video section and you'll see all of these sitting in there. But this is a wedding celebrant in Cairns. Are you getting married? Are you looking for a local marriage celebrant? There's your hooks. Story. So introduce yourself. Talk about the problems and the solutions. Then provide your offer. Call to action at the end. Right, what else have I got here? I've got a shutter company. I'll quickly show you. Again, I'll just pump it up to full size. Right, so again, if you get this right, if you get this wording right, this hook story offer right, you're going to get a lot more business. I mean, think about your current Facebook page and how it compares to what I'm showing you here. Now, if your competitor's got something like this, I know this is pretty brutal, and I'm pretty brutal when I do these presentations live to my clients or potential clients. Okay, they're going to go with them and not you. And I spoke about building groups earlier, so here's a building group in Adelaide. Right, so you think about renovating your home or adding an extension. What about a bathroom upgrade? Okay, there's your three hooks. You can have multiple hooks. So transform your home today. Again, I like to use local, family owned, all those sorts of things if that's relevant to your business. Again, we're trying to convince this person, one, we've got a solution to their problem, and two, they should choose us to do the work. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to flick between my page and the Telstra and that Sydney Builder page to finish off the review. All right, so let me go back to that analogy I made earlier where I mentioned um, you know, wanting to marry that girl or that person, sorry. So as I said, you're not just going to walk up to a stranger and ask them to marry you. 
So think of it this way. I've got that person's attention now. They've come to my page to check me out. Do I want to go on a date with this Stephen Hamilton guy? Now, I'm a bit biased, but I think my page looks pretty good. I've put a lot of effort into my hook story off a video. Right, so that's got all my value propositions, etc., running through this video. I've got my logo sitting in nice and neatly. So tick, tick. Now, the next thing people do when they come into our pages is they're going to look at the services. So they'll click on the services tab. So if you remember earlier, I mentioned that my main areas of my business are social media, website design, and e-commerce. So again, this person's come here looking for a solution to their problem. So I wanna make sure they understand, yes, I've got the solution to that problem. Now, not only do I do those, as I mentioned, I do everything else. So make sure under your services tab, you list everything you do and put it in the order that you, you know, that's most profitable, that you, you know, the main areas of your business as well. Now, after they've looked at services, again, they can leave at any time, remember. So if they leave, we've lost the opportunity. They're going on a date with someone else, if you wanna think of it like that. But they're still on our page, which means they're still interested, which means we've still got an opportunity to get that date. So once they've looked at services, they're gonna go look at reviews. So as you can see there, I've got um, five out of five star reviews from 49 people. Now overall, I've got over 100 five star reviews on Facebook, uh, five star reviews and recommendations on Facebook, Google, and on my website. Right, so again, think of the real world. Imagine if this person went out into the real world and asked, hey, this Stephen guy wants to take me on a date. Imagine if 49 people yelled back, yeah, he's a great guy. Right? That person's gonna be more inclined to wanna to go on that date with me now. Whereas if I went to, let's have a look at Sydney person, look at their reviews, just as an example, they've got no recommendations. So imagine that person found out, you know, nobody vouched for me. They're gonna be less likely to wanna to go on that date with me. So let me jump back to my page now. So. Again, if they're still on the page, they're still interested. Now what happens next, and again, this is based on the research, this isn't my opinion. They'll hit on the home button, and then they're gonna look at how many followers you've got. So I've got 1,377 followers. So let's again, think of the real world. Imagine if that person went out into the real world, asked about me, and found out I've got no friends, zero. She's gonna think I'm a dork. She isn't probably gonna go out on a date with me. Whereas if I've got lots of friends, she's gonna think I'm popular. And as shallow as this sounds, people would rather be friends with popular people. Right, so make sure you've got lots of followers. So let's jump back to the Sydney guy. Obviously, Telstra would have a heap. Right, 292. So not terrible, but you know, it could be a lot better. So let's jump back to my page. What happens next? So once they've looked at that, the next thing they look at is how many friends in common we've got. So as you can see, I've got 244 of my friends who also like this page. So again, let's think real world. Imagine that girl went to a barbecue and mentioned me and five people at the barbecue said, hey, yeah, I'm friends with Stephen. Okay, again, this is all about gaining this person's trust. As I said earlier, if they don't trust us, they're not doing business with us. And if they don't trust us, they're not gonna go on a date with us. So this is all about trust. Now, once we've built that trust, now we need to get the date. Because again, if we don't go on a date, we're not gonna marry the person. If we don't get the, um, the booking or the order or the quote, we're not gonna get the business. So the next thing we do, and the next thing people look at, is the very first post. Now this is important for a couple of reasons. On average, people look at our Facebook business pages 1.2 something percent of the time. So basically we've got one chance to convince this person to go on a date with us right here, right now. If we can't, they're gonna go on a date with our competitor, which is obviously <laughs> not what we wanna have happen. So this first post needs to be a what I call a pinned ad post. So it's pinned, which means it's locked in the spot, which means it's the first post people see. And as I said, they look at our page once, they pretty much only look at the first couple of posts. So while this post here is talking about Twitter, that's a great post to put out in people's news feeds, but I don't want that to be the first post people see. I want the first post to be a hook story offer. Does your social media strategy suck? Hook, introduction, talk about the problems, provide a solution. My solution, and my offer, sorry, is a free social media strategy session. Okay, so this is how you structure your Facebook business page in order to generate more sales, leads, bookings, and orders. Uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about is I wanna talk about how to use chatbots. So let's jump into that next. So why should you have a chatbot attached to your Facebook business page? Well, think of it this way. 
In the real world, some people would rather text you or message you rather than call you. And the same thing applies on your Facebook business page. So let me just jump back over to that Sydney builder that we randomly selected earlier. And I'm going to click on there, send a message. Now, again, I know I harp on this, but remember, they're on this page or our page. They're here because they're interested in our business. Now, if they decide to go through the messenger option, I'm going to argue they're probably more than just a little bit interested. So let's click on send message and see what happens. Now, in most cases, and your page would probably be the same, is you've either got nothing here, so people have to type in whatever they want to say, and then they're waiting for you to respond. Or in the back of Facebook, you've got some options to put in things like where you're located, what are your hours, etc. Now, if I type something in or I select one of those options, how long do you think I'm going to wait for you to respond? For me, I'm not going to wait very long. Right? Remember, I'm on your page, I'm interested. I've got a question, answer it. You're more than likely going to get me as a client. Think of it again, think of it like wanting to go on the date. This person's now said, yes, I want to go on a date with you. Right, they're not going to sit here and wait. If you take too long to respond, they're going to go on a date with your competitor. So let me show you how to use a chatbot in real time to convert this person from interest into sales, leads, bookings, or orders. So what I'm going to do is jump over to my page. Close that down. Click on send message. Now I'll click get started. I'm going to jump up here and show you on a bigger screen just so you can see it a little bit easier. So this is my chatbot in real time. So I've got the little penguin pops up going, hello, I want this to be fun and friendly. Again, I'm trying to convince this person. I'm trying to gain their trust. Hook story offer, value propositions. So hello, Stephen. Now we can personalize the message in a chatbot. So it would say your name instead of my name, obviously. So welcome to Honeyweb Online Marketing Solutions. I'm a chatbot. Now it's important that you actually explain that this is a chatbot so they don't think they're talking to a person. So I'm a chatbot designed to help answer any questions you may have or to show you our fantastic services. Honeyweb are an evidence-based online marketing agency here to get you more sales leads, bookings and orders. Do you have a question or are you interested in our services? Now if they click on questions, we can have the option of you know, what's your question or frequently asked questions. They can go in there and see if there's a, an answer to the question they may have. So that's like a little ser a service person working for you 24-7. Or you can list your services, you can list your product range, you can even have your online shop listed there and we can even have an online shop hooked up to this as well. But let's click on services for this example. Now again, if they click services, I'm going to assume they're interested in my services. So now again, it's hook story offer. Now whenever, now again, I want mine to be fun and friendly, so I've got that little sheet from whatever that movie's called, Go New Beauty. And then I'm just, again, hook story offer, a complete range of online marketing services. Now they can swipe through them. So I've got social media, website design, e-commerce, again, those three main areas I mentioned earlier. I've got other ones as well, but let's just go back to social media. Now if they click on discover more regarding social media, I now know that they're interested in social media. So again, Let's hook story offer. I want them at this point to book a free social media strategy session. If they went through the website, I'd want them to book a free website design strategy session, e-commerce, etc. So there's my hook story. And finally, here comes the offer. Bang. All right, so I'm offering them a free social media strategy session. Now for people who go, yep, all right, I want to take up that offer, book now. Now it's a lead generator. I'm about to collect their details so I can actually ring them back and book a time. All right, so that's me getting pretty happy about getting a lead. I'm sure you get happy whenever you get leads as well or sales or bookings. So Stephen, what's the name of your business? Now, because I've gone through this process before, I've already provided my name, email and mobile number. So this system's already collected the data, so it's not gonna ask me for that again. But it's asking for my business name. So again, now I've got the business name, which means for me, I can now do a bit of research before I call these people back. So as it says now, we have your contact details and we'll give you a call as soon as possible and arrange a time. Right, so I've just taken this person from my Facebook business page. Again, at any day, time, whatever, they've come to my page, they're interested, they've gone through my chatbot option, I've just turned that person into a lead. Now had they have just said I'm interested in social media and I didn't respond, you know, quick time because I can't, I'm busy and I'm sure you're the same. So if I didn't respond in a, in a decent time, they're gone. They've gone with someone else. I've lost that opportunity. So that's why setting up a chat bot 
on your Facebook business page is so important. Now the next thing we're gonna go through is I wanna show you how to set up and run successful Facebook and Instagram advertising campaigns. Once you've got your Facebook business page upgraded and you've attached your chatbot, now's the time to start running Facebook and Instagram advertising campaigns. Just like if you and I own that restaurant, the first thing we do is we would build the restaurant, make it look really nice, then you make sure the food and the staff are amazing, and it's then that you start promoting the business. You and I can't complain that no one's turned up to our restaurant if we haven't promoted the business. Think of it this way, imagine if you and I organized a barbecue last weekend and we're sitting out the back, we're all excited, we've got the music playing, the drinks are on ice, the food's ready to go, three hours has gone past, nobody's turned up, you're looking at me going, what is going on, Stephen? And then I ask you whether you invited anyone, and you didn't, and I didn't invite anyone either. Well, no wonder we're having a bad barbecue, we didn't invite anyone. So this is the same for business. You can't sit around and complain how slow business is if you haven't invited anyone, or you haven't told them about your business. So this is where the Facebook ads come in, Facebook and Instagram ads come in. We wanna put your messaging in the relevant people's news feeds so they know you're having a barbecue. And guess what, the more people you invite, the more people turn up, who'd have thunk it? So let's have a look at Facebook advertising now. I'm gonna jump in and show you my campaigns and I'm gonna to explain to you exactly how to set up and run successful Facebook and Instagram ads. Most of the business owners I talk to who have tried Facebook advertising tell me they don't work. Now there's two reasons why I hear this all the time. Number one is they don't understand how to write ads. They don't understand hook story offer. They don't understand how to get their value propositions right. So just think of it like writing a song. I'd have no chance of ever writing a hit song. Even people who know how to write songs, they'd be lucky if they got one in a hundred to be a hit. Well, the same thing applies with Facebook ads. There's an artistic side to it. There's a structure to writing creative ads that actually work. So if you don't understand value propositions and you don't understand the hook story offer technique, then of course you're gonna to struggle to get good results on Facebook advertising. Now the second reason is from AB split testing. So if you remember I said earlier about testing different button colors, etc. Well, the same thing applies for running Facebook ads. So let me jump into one of my ad campaigns. I wanna show you how AB split testing can have a massive impact on the results you get with a Facebook ad. What you're looking at here is Facebook ads managers. So if you've got a Facebook business page, you have a Facebook ads manager connected to that right now. So as you can see in here, I've run over 600 campaigns. I've got two current active campaigns, but I wanna go down and show you a previous campaign to explain AB split testing when we're talking about running Facebook ads. So here's a campaign. Now this was, I was offering a free social media strategy session, and this is back on the 2nd of the 4th, 2019. So let me just jump into this campaign, jump into the ads. So here you can see, I've got 10 different versions of this ad. Some are images, some are graphics, um, some are videos. Again, I wanna test and measure, see which gets me the best results. Now, as I said, a lot of business owners I talk to tell me their Facebook ads don't work. So let's have a look at the reason why that is the case. So if I go in here, and let me just find the ad I wanna show you. There we go there. All right, so this ad here, got me one lead at a cost of $127. So let's imagine I do what most people do. They do an ad, chuck it up on the on Facebook, throw some money at it, it doesn't work, they spit the dummy, Facebook doesn't work, and then they never do it again. Okay, well, imagine you came to me and asked me that question, and I said to you, okay, well I tried Facebook ads as well, I got one lead, it cost me $127.55, what a rip off, it doesn't work. Well hang on. This ad here got me 72 leads at a cost of $49. Same offer, just a different ad. Overall, I got 114 leads from this campaign at a cost of $52.67. Now, if I go back to the next campaign the year later, so again, just let me scroll across. There it is there. Okay, so this one here. Right, so this one I've got, sorry, 392 leads at a cost of $25.81 a lead. So it's exactly the same offer, a social media strategy session. This is started on the 31st of the 1st, 2020. I pretty much ran that for six or seven months and I was just flat out, so I had to turn that ad off. But you can see here I went from $57.67 per lead down to 25.81. dollars 
Okay, this is why you do A-B split testing. This is why you need to know how to write ads. Once you get your ad right and it's consistently delivering you those results, then it becomes scalable. And what I mean by scalable is we can turn that ad spend up. So you can see here, I was spending $30 a day, 392 leads. I mean, that generated something like over, well over $250,000 in sales for me. Right, Facebook ads work. And to back that up, I want to show you a couple of things. I did a search for the richest companies on the planet. 100 largest companies in the world by market capitalization. There's Facebook there. Number, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, sixth. So the sixth richest company on the planet. Mark Zuckerberg. You probably know who he is. Did another search. Top 10 richest people in the world. Bezos, number one. Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg is the fifth richest human being on the planet. Facebook's business model is advertising. That's how they make their money. So if their advertising didn't work, Mark Zuckerberg wouldn't be the fifth richest man on the planet and Facebook wouldn't be the sixth richest company on the planet. But again, you need to understand how to get your value propositions written right. Then how to write a good hook story offer. Because again, once you get that right, it becomes scalable. Let me jump back in and explain what I mean by that in more detail. Right, so let me go to my current campaigns. As I said, I'm pretty busy at the moment. Um, I've just put on some new stuff, so I'm ready to take on more business. So what that means is, as you can see, I'm spending $30 a day. Um, this is a recent ad I recently set up just last month. Uh, 17 leads so far. Now, I haven't been 100% happy with this ad, so I'm, I'm doing some new ads at the moment. But what this means is, if I'm flat out at $30 a day, clearly I can't take any more business. If $30 a day um, has me at 50% capacity, then you would assume, based on the numbers, that $60 a day should get me to 100% capacity. If I want to put on more staff, which is what I'm doing at the moment, and my capacity goes up, therefore I just turn that dial up. I could be spending $100 a day, $500 a day. It really depends on how big you want to take this. But it can't happen unless you get that first consistent advertising campaign running where it's, as again, consistently delivering you the number of leads or sales or whatever it is you're looking for on a monthly, daily basis. So again, Facebook ads work and you need to be willing to invest in your business in order to get this to happen. But again, I go back and say, you've got to get your value proposition. You've got to get your ads right. Because again, once you get that working, sky's the limit. So there it is. The simple three-stage social media strategy that you can set on autopilot. Stage one, upgrade your Facebook business page. Stage two, implement a chatbot. And stage three, run successful Facebook and Instagram advertising campaigns. Now I've explained to you how value propositions work and how to use the hook story offer technique. But if you feel like you still need some help, then as promised, I'm going to offer you a free one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me. Now, because you and your business are both unique, I'd like to work with you to establish a strategy specifically designed for your business. Now, all you need to do to get this strategy session is to complete the form below, provide your details, and I'll give you a call back to arrange a time. Yep, it's that easy. Now, I am limited to only six strategy sessions per week, and I only work with select clients. So complete the form, I'll give you a call back, we'll do the strategy session, and then at the end of the strategy session, you can implement the strategy yourself, you can get someone else to do it, or hopefully you choose me to do it for you. But either way, this strategy needs to be implemented as soon as possible, because as I said, there's never been more people on social media, and for every day you wait, you're gonna miss out on more and more business. So fill in that form now, provide your details. I look forward to having a chat to you shortly, and let's get your business pumping in 2021. Thank you.